In a world where options for education in classical crafts are scarce, some decide to take on a more difficult and empirical approach. Being self-taught and learning by observation, Yannick Hörsel is one of them. And now he has entered Adnerdrum's studio, where emphasis is placed on philosophy and the ability to convey a gripping story on the canvas. Starting his paintings in a muted, cool tone, Herzl's method allows for a great potency of the subsequent application of warmer colors. At the time being, he is infused by the dark and torn up portraits of Rembrandt and is doing everything in his power to repossess the effect of the Dutch master's technique. Using a thick, cream-like medium, Herzl is able to apply small, textured strokes with a delicious vibrancy. Despite the meticulous method, his paintings take on the impression of weariness and age. During my latest stay at the Nerdrums, Yannick Herzl was kind enough to demonstrate his technique by mixing the medium and showcasing how the strokes behave differently. Oh, yes. See how it melts in. Using the same method, he also showed me how to paint an eye from sketch to completion. Oh, that's the power of contrast. It's not blue by no stretch <laughs> of the imagination. Exactly, exactly. All right, I grew up with TV kitchen, so I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, uh, this is your medium, right? And I have to admit, I haven't done that before or used that before, so I'm really eager to learn mm. how you do it. Yes, uh, certainly. So, um, the ingredients are basically uh, one egg. What you need is uh, essic essence. Uh, um, sorry, uh, vinegar essence, the German came yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so, um, then I have some clove oil which I put in, like one or two drops, just to uh, keep it from spoiling. Uh, sun thick and linseed oil. I have uh, two versions, one uh, handmade and one uh, store bought. This is a little bit uh, more runny, this is a little bit more stiff. Well, 
So uh, historically, it would probably be that Rembrandt would have used uh, linseed oil. I don't think we found much uh, walnut oil uh, in his paints. And uh, but you can do the same with sun thickened walnut oil if if you wanted to. Right. Okay. So uh, it's, you can still play the walnut oil game game there. Right. Right. But it, of course, it takes uh, quite a bit longer to dry. It does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. So we just sort of uh, take the glass here and try to uh, separate the egg yellow. So uh, technically you should also try to get rid of the, I guess the name is the membrane, but uh, oh. you could sort of grab it and then pr uh, prick it and it flows down, but I'm not uh, good at that, so I'm just going to put in the whole thing. That's uh, absolutely fine. Beat it a little bit and then you uh, put in the vinegar. So the proportions should be one part uh, egg yolk and then sort of the same amount of vinegar, perhaps a little bit less. Okay. And then it's uh, two drops of or three drops of the of the clove oil, and then five parts of the sun thickened linseed oil. So it's just uh, a little bit there. I think that should be quite enough. And you've done this a couple of times already. Yes. Um, you will see it sort of thicken immediately. Wow. Okay, start with uh, the really thick oil here. So that's linseed oil now? That's uh, sun thick and linseed oil, yes. yeah. And the, the best thing is to sort of um, go one uh, drop at a time. So you don't put in too much. Yeah, a little bit and then uh, yeah. mix, it, mix it and then... Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, you see how uh, it already becomes uh, very sticky and makes these sort of strings. Looking nice. Yeah. You're doing a heroic job here. Oi. I have to say, I empathize. So, uh, the journey. Okay, let's take a look here. If we dip it in, it sort of uh, should stay without absolutely dropping, but you see it moves and doesn't... Shouldn't run down. Yeah, exactly. But uh, also here you see a little spike. It uh, doesn't lose its uh, shape when I shake it. So that's uh, sort of approaching the consistency and you could stop here now. Okay, then we uh, still should add the, the, the clove oil to keep it from spoiling. Just a few drops. One, two, three. Okay, I guess it's, uh, yeah, I I guess it's, it's uh, three, yeah. yeah. Just give it a good... Uh, so if you don't add that, then it will Spoiled. No, it will right. not uh, necessarily, but uh, it's just to keep it safe. Yep. Okay. Then uh, let's uh, do a little demonstration. Perfect. Okay, let's put some paint on. First, we have some uh, Venetian red, some uh, ivory black, and some burned umber. I guess it will be great to demonstrate it on some white as well. Okay. Let's get some of our uh, magic uh, mayonnaise here. Okay. 
Wow. So, uh, of course, everyone knows how normal NCDO looks like, but uh, let's refresh the memories. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit much here. Let's do it. Just flows out. Yes, and then let's do the same here with the black. here with the raw amber. And even if you uh, could do uh, some textured glass strokes here. But if we uh, do the same with the medium now, right next to it. Mm -hmm. Nice and oh yeah, look at that. You just sort of blend it out, and you immediately see the difference. Yeah, it it keeps more together. It's softer. Yes. Uh, it's well, uh, fatter, I guess. It uh, it's um keeps its shape so it uh, doesn't flow. Yeah. There's these uh, these beautiful uh, textures. Right. So the, the great thing uh, if mm. you use it in, in black is uh, you often see in, in Rembrandt's that his uh, black was uh, quite textured. Yeah. If you were to do the same with uh, just normal black, pure black, it's very uh, opaque, and if yeah. you if you paint uh, the shadows or the black uh, very o opaque, then uh, the the painting will become very flat. Right. But what you want is the is the translucency of the black, so mm -hmm. sort of as if you were to do a glaze in black, but uh, actually having texture in it. So the, the black or the pigment is sort of suspended in this emulsion. Yeah, exactly. So. Let's do so it's like it has more depth. Uh, mm. uh, yeah. Same here with uh, some red. I think you can see it very nicely there. Oh, look at that. There you go. Let's try to get a really nice brush stroke going there. One second. Get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, wow. another yeah. wonderful thing is that if you want to uh, paint another brush stroke on top of it, you can actually do that. Whereas if you would do that with normal paint, they would sort of intermix. Mm. So it's, let's get our small brush here. Get a little bit of uh, normal linseed oil going. Let's show how that looks. Some white. If you do that here, see how it's yeah. uh, that's, uh, just horrible. You cannot no, make a filtered, line there. Yeah. yeah, so you're swallowed by that. If you do the same here and then put some medium into it. Oh. You see how it uh, <laughs> stays on top of it. And uh, to finish it up, there is uh, yep. one more effect I would like to show you. Okay. So uh, if you look at Rembrandt's uh, hair, whenever he painted hair, mm. you often see that he used the backside of the brush and uh, sort of swirl in some curls and uh, little hairs, stray hairs. So uh, if you were to do that on uh, normal paints, these uh, usually turn out to be uh, quite sharp here. You see? Yeah. But if you do the same with, uh, let's get a bit more going. medium running out of space here <laughs> if you do the same here oh yes see how it melts in it has more variation yes and it has the this sort of outline to it because the the yeah. paint pool like 
builds up. Where that, that's strange that it keeps the form, but still has that little. Uh, it moves a little bit to get yeah, that softness. Too. Exactly, yeah. and then the hair actually doesn't stick out so much when you when you. And often uh, it's very noticeable when you would do it that's with normal great. paint. So you. So this is very. Uh, there's a great variety of things you can do because in this case it melts it is a shocking effect in terms of contrast but mm. it melts it nicely together and you can also really get a, a great contrast exactly so uh, and actually if you just let it dry for half a day you can uh, actually do a little bit better than i demonstrated here actually do a really thick another really thick brush stroke on top of it mm. without it intermixing almost at all Thank you for checking out this video from the School of Apelles. To watch the full video and access our premium library, go to caveofapelles.com slash subscribe and become a $10 patron. That's caveofapelles.com slash subscribe.